Hi, this is Dr. Daniel Amen. And I'm Tana Amen. We're so excited you're with us. For this week's series, what we're doing is we're playing the live class from the mm -hmm. end of mental illness. We wanted you to join us on this journey because we had such a good time in our class and the people who joined us had just saw such incredible transformation that we wanted to share the challenge with our tribe. So we wanted to share this with you and we hope that you will join us in the challenge. When I was a medical student, 1980, I think it was, Jack Dreyfus, who's the famous uh, founder of the Dreyfus Mutual Fund, he had seen psychiatrists for a long time. He struggled with anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts. And he read about an anti-seizure medication called Dilantin. He said he got his psychiatrist, convinced his psychiatrist to give him a uh, a couple of doses of it, he said within three days he didn't need his psychiatrist anymore. Oh, wow. The suicidal thoughts went away, his depression went away, his anxiety went away, and he wrote a book that I read called A Wonderful Medication Has Been Overlooked, and he was talking about the use of anti-seizure medications in psychiatry. Now, is that a mental illness? Or a brain illness. Or a brain illness. What do you think? I think like a lot of things that we look at here. It's a brain illness. And uh, that's when I started reading Dietrich Bloomer's work from uh, Emory on uh, temporal lobe dysrhythmias, which means the rhythm doesn't fire right. And um, it, it just changed my practice. And I, I have so many great stories about mind storms. And this is one of my favorite ones. I actually open uh, the revised version of Change Your Brain, Change mm -hmm. Your Life with Tommy's story. Uh, he came to see us from Orlando, Florida, nine years old. And he wasn't on my schedule. He was going to see one of the other doctors. And my assistant said, you have to go meet Tommy. And when I found him, he recognized me. He said, hey, Dr. Amon, I have a left temporal lobe problem. <laughs> I'm like, really? I'm like, how do you know that? He said, I read the book. I took the checklist in the book. And I'm like, but how do you really know that? And he said, I have a really bad temper. And you say people have bad tempers have temporal lobe problems. It's true. Um, and I used to see ghosts. I'm like, what? <laughs> he said, I used to see these green things flowed in front of my eyes and I thought they were ghosts and they would scare me. And then when I read your book, I realized those are illusions that people who have temporal lobe problems get. So a lot of people diagnosed with schizophrenia, they'll say, I see things. But the doctor doesn't go, tell me about that. And, you know, I mean, right. sometimes people will, will have hallucinations of clear formed images of somebody yelling at them or right, speaking uh, to them and vo like hearing voices. But that just reminds me of, of someone that we know that we've been trying to help recently who was starting to develop paranoia thinking that she was being followed because of these lights. She'd see these lights coming out of the ground. Is that sort of what you're talking about? Yeah. No voices, no people. Just she thought there were light, like because there were lights, there must be someone behind it. And, and for so, her, she actually has this thing called the Erlen syndrome. But does she have a left temporal lobe thing as well? Well, she had 19 car accidents, yeah. so one might suspect. <laughs> um, but Tommy, I'm talking to Tommy, and he looked at me with his big, beautiful blue eyes, and he said, and last year, to get rid of the bad thoughts in my head, I tried to kill myself. At, not, at which nine? Which just broke my heart. Oh, my no. My youngest patient tried to kill himself was four. And uh, intentionally, intentionally, yeah, because he was so depressed. I mean, you don't think children can be depressed. No, no well, I know they can be depressed, but can be depressed and have suicidal <gasps> ideation. And you got to wonder what's going on in their brain. And they, you know, basically say, I'm insane because I want to look at the brain, but I don't think so. <laughs> And when we looked at his scan, the arrow is pointing to his left temporal lobe, which is hurt. So he has this thing called so he was right. storms. He was right. And so how do we treat it? 
Sometimes we'll use anti-seizure medications, um, the Very ketogenic scary, sure. diet. And actually, I'm going to do an interview on our podcast. Check out our podcast, Brain Warriors Way podcast, coming up soon with Dr. Josh, A Josh Axe, who wrote uh, on the ketogenic diet. Um, and sometimes neurofeedback can help. Uh, we've seen it just help so many people. So um, that's the M, either mental health issues or mind storms. The I is immunity or infections. And uh, did I tell you um, they released episode five? Mm -hmm. So yesterday they released episode five in Justin Bieber's new um, docu-series, Seasons. And that's the episode I'm in. I may be in one of the ones coming up. Uh, we filmed for a long time. But um, Justin had the mind storms. So mm -hmm. he had that temporal lobe dysrhythmia that I talked about. He actually has a lot of these risk factors. Um, well, you got to imagine someone who tours that much, isn't sleeping, isn't eating right, isn't taking care of themselves. They're, they're just set up for it. Yeah, so he had low blood flow. Mm -hmm. Retirement and aging didn't apply because he's young, except he had ADD when he was a child. And when you have ADD, learning is painful for you. And the retirement and aging strategy is new learning. Mm -hmm. um, but he didn't have the attention span for that. I is for inflammation. He had high inflammatory markers. G is genetics. He had a family history of depression and addiction. Um, H is head trauma. He had three concussions uh, when he was young. T is toxins. He started using marijuana when he was 13. Well, and he was, he, had, he talks very openly about his, his, uh, his drug use, and it's pretty crazy. I mean, he got to where he was, you know, doing drugs to go to sleep, doing drugs to wake up, doing drugs to get through the day. I mean, he was doing that lean, you know, cough syrup, crazy stuff that kids do now, and like just crazy stuff all day long. So, so out of the first six risk factors, he's got virtually all of them. Right. And then he had mind storms and he came out publicly and said he had Lyme disease. Actually, it's more complicated than that. But he had this thing called an autoimmune encephalitis, which means right. his immune system turned on itself mm -hmm. and actually saw his brain as the enemy. And yeah, it was crazy. Started attacking it. He had um, antibodies to his own dopamine receptors. Well, I just remember. I remember how sad it was because I remember th long after he stopped doing drugs, that kid was just trying so hard to do everything, but it was like his brain was fighting him. It was just so sad. And so, immunity infections are really important. So he came out publicly and said he had Lyme disease. Um, there are also other infections like toxoplasmosis, uh, which is a parasite you get from cats who eat infected rats. And toxoplasmosis has been associated with Alzheimer's disease, anxiety, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, suicidal thoughts. And I just thought I'd share this with you. You, you love uh, this story. I love this stuff. <laughs> so toxoplasmosis, it's a parasite. You can see it in the upper right corner. Oh, somebody's asking, what are you two drinking? It's not it's vodka. Tea. It's tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's non-caffeinated herbal tea. <laughs> toxoplasmosis infects many animals, but it can actually only sexually reproduce in cats. And so it's looking, this parasite is looking for cats. So when it infects a rat, it turns the rat into a cat-seeking missile. Okay, that's missile. just the craziest thing. So Toxo releases a chemical in the rat's nucleus accumbens and hooks the rat on cat urine. And so typically when a rat smells cat they try urine, to avoid them. it's like danger, 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 and it avoids them. But when it's infected by Toxo, Toxo hijacks the rat's pleasure centers to make it fall in love with something that will hurt it. Do you see any connection to drug abuse? Heroin, yes. To heroin, yeah. right? And so the rat goes toward the cat rather than away from it. So the cat then eats the rat and Toxo 
gets in the cat and gets to have sex and reproduce. It's the classic tale of eat, pray, love. Really? <laughs> I love that. What well, you just, yeah. So who's really in control of your life? So parasites? Peter, parasites can <laughs> hijack your brain. Well, I mean, is it, are we in control or is your microbiome? in control, the hundred trillion bugs you have in your gut. And when you were young, because of the stress- And the you antibiotics. Were, and and the all of the antibiotics, you had upper and lower GIs by the time you were four. Yeah, and I was and, a frequent flyer at the hospital. And so your unhealthy microbiome was controlling your anxiety, mm -hmm. right? When you were nine, you had separation anxiety, you were having Mono panic attacks, you were sort of a mess. Yeah, mono at nine. Right. And when I asked you about gut and early trauma. I thought, like, you're, uh, don't shrink me. <laughs> don't shrink me. Listen, shrinking you. I was trying to get your microbiome well, Like, I'm a trauma nurse. Don't shrink me. <laughs> Anyways, before and after, your brain can heal. I have seen the light. So one of my favorite all-time stories, actually, Deb's mother may be watching. Uh, Adriana's mother may be watching. Um, Adriana, beautiful. I love smart, this story. It's one of my favorite stories. 16. Her family goes uh, to one of the national parks on vacation. And when they get to their um, when they get to their cabin, they're surrounded by six deer. I mean, most of us would think of this as a magical moment. And they thought of it as a yeah. magical moment. But 10 days later, Adriana starts hallucinating and becomes aggressive. And she's never acted like this before. Um, but she has an uncle that had spent 25 years in the Napa State Hospital, one of the state psychiatric hospitals in California for schizophrenia. Um, I'll tell you the rest of that story in a bit. But um, so what does the family do? Um, they take us to a psychiatric hospital. I mean, that's what people do, right? If you show up to the emergency room and you're hearing things and you're aggressive, they'll commit you to well, a psychiatric hospital. Well, first they're going to give hospital. you a bunch of meds. They're going to make and you feel- medications more. didn't work. So right. she then went to another hospital and then they went to Stanford. And the doctor at Stanford told the mother that she needed to accept the fact that Adriana had schizophrenia and that she Isn't would have 16 to take- a little young? this medication for the rest of her life. And Deb, the mother, was having none of that. Um, no, I mean, schizophrenia can start, I mean, the typical age is 19. Mm. Um, paranoid schizophrenia, more late 20s. That's what I thought. But um, the mom was having none of it. It ended up um, bringing her to us. Literally but, but wait, 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 you Adrian skipped a whole part of the story. Wasn't she like in a hospital for a while, dropped out of high school? Wasn't this like a whole thing? She, she was sick. And yeah. six months later, she's a shell of herself. Yeah, that doesn't even look like the same kid. And she came to see us and her brain's on fire. And thank goodness, one of my doctors go, why is her brain on fire? And heard the history of the deers because Lyme right. comes often from deer right. ticks. And Adriana, and not everybody shows up positive. Mm -mm. Only about 50% of people can you actually find lab evidence for it. But she had lab evidence for it. And on an antibiotic over the next year, she got her life back. And uh, Such a pretty girl. She is such a pretty girl. But she girl. went to Pepperdine. She ends up graduating from Pepperdine. So Goes she ends to up. Yeah. So is this a mental illness? Then she went to the University of London, right? And got a master's degree. Yeah. And she would have spent her life going down, you know, the psychiatric hole to hell. Well, and so, um, yes. And now beautiful, normal, every day about noon, I get um, a text from her mother. How can I pray for you? <laughs> Today, So her mother 
has gone through so much of my own life crises, right? My mom broke her hip. My mom has shingles, and she's always praying. But the story just, just, this story just so hit me grateful. so hard because it's like as someone who has a, has a child that that's was around. You know, there was I, I just I can't imagine your child starts to suffer this much, and you're told put your child in a hospital. You're never going to see them graduate from school. You're never going to see them get married. Well, the doctor wouldn't and- say that, but to say you're going to have to be on psychiatric medication for the rest of your life at a place like Stanford without ever looking at the brain, without ever looking at, well, what are the other causes of psychosis like right, most of us like think Lyme. of paranoid schizophrenia as being pretty extreme. Um, so that's going to change your life big time. And when I hear this story and I'm like, wow, and then you see this picture of her graduating, it's that's pretty intense. It's pretty intense. And her uncle, who was hospitalized for 25 years at yeah. Napa State Hospital, when and his sister was trying to get him out and basically had to go to court to do it, showed up with co-infections for Lyme. And you just wonder how many people – are being diagnosed with mental illnesses when they have brain health issues. Uh, so I talk about it a lot in the end of mental illness. I would dearly love you to pre-order the book um, and then go to endofmentalillness.com. We have all sorts of gifts for you when you pre-order the book, including a coupon for 50% off at BrainMD, our supplement company, along with the cookbook you did, the 10-day brain boost, and so on. Um, So, end of mental illness, one of my favorite stories in it. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the Brain Healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 978-1363.